We've got some good news to report to you in the area of election integrity. Those of you who follow our work know that Judicial Watch is the leader in using litigation and education to encourage, and in some cases, require states to take reasonable steps to clean up the voting rolls as the law requires. The National Voter Registration Act, the Motor Voter Bill, has a uh, requirement in it, obviously, that uh, you, know, you get to register to vote at, um, at voter locations, uh, excuse me, at, let's say, driver, uh, where you can get your driver's license or other places where public services are made available, what the, uh, that can lead to double registration and dirty voting rolls. And so the part of the bill is, the law is, that you got to take reasonable steps to clean up the rolls. Yes, register everybody that you can within reason. But the fraud and the dirty rolls that result as a result of those registration efforts, that can be checked by taking reasonable steps to make sure the, ro the rolls are clean, meaning that when people move or die or, move, or, or otherwise become ineligible, their names are removed from the rolls. And you know what the law requires? It's something as simple as sending a card. You don't vote in an election, federal general election, you get a card. And if you don't do it and say, then the card essentially says, hey, we missed you. Are you still there? And if you don't respond to that card and then don't vote in the next two general federal elections. So we're talking about potentially a time period as long as four to five years. Then you're removed from the rolls. The states don't, too many states don't even do that. Otherwise, the rolls would be much cleaner. In North Carolina, we sued in North Carolina. They've got a million, nearly a million extra names on the rolls. In California, 20% of the rolls were dirty or, quote, inactive. The sorts of names that should have been being sent cards and being removed. California wasn't doing any of that for nearly 20 years until we sued California and Los Angeles County. And now Los Angeles County is removing up to 1.6 million names under the process I described. In Maryland, we had indications that their rolls were dirty as well, and we wanted access to the voter rolls, their registration data, so we could further analyze it. And they didn't want to give it to us. So the lower court, uh, the district court, the federal district court, said you've got to follow the law and give Judicial Watch the information. But then they, he wanted additional briefing on another key aspect of the full voter registration records, which is the birth dates. Unless you have birth date data, it's hard to figure out, it makes it harder to figure out whether, for instance, someone who died 10 years ago because, or should have died 10 years ago because the birth date indicates they're 120, With the birth date, you can figure out there's a problem. Makes sense. It's public data. It's the part of the registration record, and Maryland didn't want to give it to us. And the court said, you've got to fight. You've got to do it. The judge in the case, Judge Hollander, said the Judicial Watch need not demonstrate its need for birth date information in order to facilitate its effort to ensure that the voter rolls are properly maintained. Nevertheless, it has put forward reasonable justification for requiring birth date information, including using birth dates to find duplicate registrations and searching for voters who remain on the rolls despite improbable age. So, for instance, you can have John Smith, and you could have a thousand John Smiths on the voter rolls. And it's hard to figure out which John Smiths are duplicates, without some key further identifying information, including, obviously, birth dates. So if you got two John Smiths with the same birth dates, it's a pretty good indication that maybe there's a duplicate file there. And the court noted that we didn't even have to provide a reason. We had a right to it, but we did. We went the extra step. And so thanks, thanks to this lawsuit and thanks to this court ruling, the second one that was favorable to us, 
In his first decision, he wrote, Organizations such as Judicial Watches have the resources and expertise, thanks to you, that few individuals can marshal. By excluding these organizations from access to voter registration lists, the state law undermines the federal laws of efficacy. Accordingly, Maryland election law is an obstacle to the accomplishments of the NVRA's purposes. It follows that the state law is preempted insofar as it allows only Maryland registered voters to access voter registration lists. So first we had to overcome that hurdle. Then they didn't want to give us the complete data. And now they will have to give us the complete data. We've been fighting this for three years. Three years to get this basic information that we're due to under law. You know what the Russians did in response to our request? They accused us of being agents for the Russians. Can you believe that? Well, I guess you can, because that's the way the left operates now. If you disagree with them, you're an agent for the Russians. So you had official government bodies in court telling us that we were agents for the Russians. Isn't that outrageous? Because we want to make sure that your votes are more secure because the voting rolls are cleaner. Because dirty voting rolls can lead to dirty elections. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel to catch all the latest news from Judicial Watch.